It seems like every gardener has plants that are favorites, or plants that favor them. And in Bob Stadnick's breathtaking garden, there is a group of plants that definitely shines, whether in a bed where they are the main attraction, or even if they're mixed among the other planting. And they are extraordinary evergreens. Welcome back to Twyla and Jillian. You know, a lot of this 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 garden's got a lot of evergreens in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've always loved evergreens. There's probably about 70 different species in this yard. And uh, if you're looking for a good juniper, you can't beat Medora. 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 That's okay. a really good one because it's got that uh, that nice kind of silvery blue color. It's pyramidal, never needs trimming. That's what I like about it. And it's hardy. Very hardy. Very hardy. Yeah. And how old are these ones then? These are about uh, 15, 16 years old. Okay. And, and they haven't skipped a beat? Not at all. I planted them when they were about my height. Okay. Oh. So they've grown the last, last several years really, really well. So may I ask you a question? Sure. What made you say evergreens? Uh, there's a company down in, down in Oregon, yeah. Isley Nursery. Yeah. And one time I saw a picture of their nursery, of a planting they did. Mm -hmm. So I thought, that's cool. And yeah. I need that element of evergreen in the yard because evergreens in the wintertime, really nice to look at because you've yeah. got that greenery. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you just have a bunch of sticks sticking out of the snow basically. Yeah. But like this, you have greenery as well yeah. in the winter. And it helps to get rid of that kind of you know, the long winter yeah. mm -hmm. boredom, if you will, whatever, yeah. right? But It's like some bones in your garden. Yeah. It's structure. Yeah. yeah. And so I just decided to create a mini evergreen bed just right here after seeing a photo of their massive ones. So I kind of pick and chose some yeah. of the evergreens that I I really liked. Yeah. And the cedar, the DeGroot. DeGroot spire, yeah. Which I'm still trying to get somewhere in my yard. I'm going to sneak it in because I love that. The way it like waves and is like so yeah. compact. It's, it's, so it's very nice. unique. It's a very unique cedar. Does it do that flagging thing? You know how some cedars they get that wave of orange that dies back. It's like this. This one doesn't. Yeah, it no. seems like it's, it doesn't. It's so dense. Yeah. Well, I also it's one of my favorites. I love it. it. It's a winner, and I like yeah. the fact that it's so so narrow. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and and upright. And what's this then? That is another uh, Mr. Bowling Ball cedar. Oh, you've got the smaller one on I the other side. I have the small side. one there and the large one here. I love this green. It's a very soft, soft green, yeah. hey? Yeah. And then it contrasts with the U that's beside it. Yeah. Right. Wow. And then in front over here, that's a limber pine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the limber pine. <laughs> Okay, I researched this one, right? You did. Dangerous I'm impressed. In Alberta, <laughs> lives for hundreds of years. No cones till it's 50. Does that mean this one's 50? Nope. <laughs> Which goes to prove you can't believe everything you're reading That's in, right. a, in a book. The internet is not... You got cones, it. Right? You got it. No, this thing has had cones. This is its third year. Wow. And when they fall on your head, it hurts. Trust me. It's a cone. Oh, yeah. 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 So when they fall, like they're opening up right now, and when they fall, the seed is there. So all you have to do is dry it out and you get the seed. So yeah, easy, and easy. This one, I just, I just noticed the bark on it. It's, oh, it's like silk. It looks like a gray it, yeah. silk. Yeah, like very, that. very smooth. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the light is just like adding its own. Okay, and then what's this one then? Is that, that another larch? That's another larch. That's okay. a variety called Blue Pyramid. Okay and uh, very hard to get. And it's been here for a lot of years. Never any really yeah. back on it either. Really? Loses all its needles in the fall. Yeah. It turns a really bright orange color in the fall. Yeah. And then all the needles fall off yeah. as usual. And then it just regrows every spring. Yeah. This is the Taylor Sunburst Pine. It uh, comes out, it's got the yellow needles in spring. It's a lot more, more uh, yellow than this. Yeah. And then it starts to go into kind of a, I guess a little more of a neon color, but in spring it's like really yellow. And then over here, this is that Swiss stone pine. Oh my goodness. This 
Oh, that feels nice too. It's so soft. Mm -hmm. And this guy uh, has been here for a long time. Yeah. And um, this was supposed to be a smaller version, only about 10 feet tall. Oh. Yeah. But these things don't. He's gorgeous. They don't. They don't follow a rule book. No. No. They just they keep are going. Happy. Yeah. And it has this nice low like canopy, right? Right. Which is really something lovely if that's what you're looking for. Because I think lots of evergreens, it kind of comes up a bit, right? That once that's right. Yeah. This stays low to the ground. You've got the canopy right down to the ground. Yeah. And I think probably my favorite out of everything that's in this yard would have to be this fur. Oh, I love that. It's fur. like a noble fur. Yeah. So when you walk past it, it smells like you're up in the high elevations in the mountains. Yes. Now, again, according to the books, this was not supposed to grow this high. <laughs> but it I mean, your garden. I guess so. There's something about it, but you know, it's you walk past it, like I say, you smell that fur. Mm -hmm. It's you don't like see like your mountains in Edmonton and Alberta all that often. You don't know. This would be about a zone four to five. Yeah. Actually. Wow this fur the color is so it's like this turquoise but it's almost white isn't it right like it, right it's so it has such a texture visually and the bark is very smooth on it too mm. which is really cool oh, so I, I don't see. know if you can see it a bit there because it's so thick yeah. but you know that's one characteristic of furs they're very soft yeah yes. soft and and also the bark is kind of a uh it's almost satiny white right. almost yeah. in color yeah it's the perfect, perfect Christmas tree. It's so beautiful. And we got another, over here, another Swiss stone pine. This is another different variety. I was gonna say, you, this is the one that I had, but it succumbed to scale. But you yeah. power washed the scale. I, I got annoyed with scale. Yes. Yeah. And uh, for the last several years, because it, uh, it really takes its toll on pine. Yeah. Uh, yes, we we have been battling it, and I have been power washing. But I, and I swear, I'm out there power washing like maybe twice a week. Really? Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, like, I don't know. It's better this year than last yeah. year. Last year was really bad. And you were talking about limber pines earlier. This is a mini limber pine. <laughs> a mini limber pine. <laughs> They're so thick. And oh, I love it. It's chunky. Chonky. It's kind Chonky. Of like a Muppet or something, you know, like <laughs> Yeah. I love it. Do you? This thing was uh, selected in at high elevations in Denver, Colorado. It was found. Mm. And uh, and then then the, the nursery guy went and propagated it and released it. Hmm. And um, I was lucky to get it because it uh, I don't know if I don't think it's available any place yeah. actually. Right. Yeah. So and that plant is about 18 years old, 19 oh, really? years old. And it's been here right from the very beginning. So this is almost kind of like a bonsai, right? Like yeah. the evergreens, yeah. if you think of them as the miniature ones that you grow that are very, very slow growing yeah. and mm -hmm. some of the other ones that you shape, it's like you're creating a bonsai you are. garden yeah. as well. And actually you can also shape, shape fur into bonsai yeah. very easily. Yeah. Like the old fashioned balsam fur that, uh, you know, that are in the nurseries you can easily shape them yeah. to be a nice big bonsai. Yeah, so neat. This is St. Mary's broom. Mm -hmm. This is this is uh, uh, a witch's broom because in nature, what happens? You have plants which, through the genetics, something goes haywire, and the, all of a sudden, everything you'll have a growth on there that gets stunted. Yeah. And basically, in a nutshell, that's what happens. And this was selected. And this is St. Mary's Broom, it's really? called. St. Mary's Broom. There's one here and there's one behind you. Okay. And that's... So this I thought this was just like a little broom, like no, spruce. No, no, no. And this is... So is this thicker and more compact then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of a, a mutation that somebody then cultivated. Right. And do they, when they do that, do they cultivate from cuttings? Like cutting They do cuttings. They so do cuttings. The genes stay the same. Right. Yeah. yeah, they do cuttings. Yeah, all the time. And then this thing is really cool because it, this is... This is about 20, I'd say 25 years old, this plant, because mm -hmm. I had it at my first house. And then I brought it with me when I you know, moved here. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this one's about 25 years old. That's as much as it's grown in 25 mm -hmm. years. Wow. So it stays really small. That's perfect. Because I, and then, oh, nice. and then this, uh, and here I just decided to put, this is, um, 
uh, one of the a mini bristlecone pine. Oh. Yeah. It's not one that gets not the traditional one. This is a miniature. Okay. What has it got happening here? That's normal. That's normal. That's normal with bristlecones. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. That's what the that's what they they look like. They almost look like they're full of scale, but yeah. they're not. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the trees are that I'm spraying. Maybe that's why it's, yeah. you can't get rid of it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? <laughs> We're never gonna leave. We're never getting out of here. Cause you're just like, oh, are we haven't even touched the front. This is the gold form of a mugle pine on okay. standard. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, and uh, this thing is, uh, this has been here for a number of years. And again, I like standard because you have all the real estate down below that yes. you can plant a few things under. Okay, what's, what else have we got in here? What's that one? That is a hemlock. Oh, okay. That's silver frost. Now you studied this. Is the hemlock a zone hardy here? I think not. Not common here, right? Not common. Not yeah. common. Always winter kills. Yeah. That thing has been here for about 12, 13 years. And yeah. it comes in with the light growth and then it gets darker. That's right. Yeah. Does it, some evergreens are supposed to go a little bit plummy or in the fall, yeah. The fall. Yeah, this guy yeah. just stays that color. It stays like that. Yeah. It's kind yeah, of see. a frosty, minty color, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. And the the thing with, uh, with, with certain evergreens, like, see, we need a really long season, like, into November for them to turn that color. Okay. Yeah. To turn that proper color. Oh, okay. Like, right. like what they're supposed to, like, plummy color, you know? Yeah. Great news. There's still one more episode to come from Bob's Garden. Next time, we'll be talking with Bob about some of his other favorite plants, perennials, trees, and shrubs. It's going to be great. See you next time, and thank you for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>